Hi everybody, welcome to episode four of my Paul McCartney album ranking series. So I've been ranking all the Paul McCartney albums uh, in order in terms of how much I enjoy listening to them. And I've been starting from the most recent album, McCartney 3, and working my way backwards. We've got as far as Tug of War so far, and this is the ranking that we've built up uh, from Tug of War right through to McCartney 3. I'm going to go back in time further now, starting with McCartney 2, and start slotting a few more albums into these rankings. So, McCartney 2 from 1980. So what do I think of this album, first of all? Well, in theory, I love this album. I love the idea of it, and I love everything about it. In practice, what I tend to find happens is that when I listen to it, I often don't find uh, that I enjoyed it as much as I thought I was going to do. Uh, I still enjoy it a lot, but I always feel like I'm going to get a little bit more out of it that doesn't quite come. And I think possibly the reason for that could be that when the, the brilliant McCartney 2 archive collection came out a few years ago, which is one of the absolute highlights of that whole series, it sort of showed what the album could have been potentially. So I think songs like Check My Machine, Secret Friend, Blue Sway, they really would have fitted great on this album and it's a shame that they're not here. But that's not to say that I don't love what's here. I think Coming Up and Temporary Secretary is a great two song starter to the album. Temporary Secretary is crazy and I absolutely love it. On the Way, really nice and bluesy next. I've never been the massive fan of uh, Waterfalls, and I know lots of people regard it as a McCartney classic. It always just feels a little unfinished to me. Uh, and I guess it's an interesting question. Is it better that he left it quite low key, like it is on this album? Or would it have benefited from a, a big sort of production number, like, like he did shortly after with things like Tug of War and Wanderlust, for example? Would Waterfalls have benefited from that? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. But it, it's one that I always wonder whether it could have been a bit more than it than uh, than it ended up being. My highlight towards the back end of the album is Dark Room. I think that's uh, that's a great song, and uh, one of these days at the end is is pretty gorgeous as well. So I do really enjoy this album, and I do love the whole idea of it. Uh, I just wish. I just wish there was a couple of other things that were on it. But I am putting that in sixth place at the moment in my ranking. It is going just behind Flowers in the Dirt, just above memory, almost full. We're then back into the 70s. We are finally into the 70s, the last decade of this journey. And it is Back to the Egg from 1979, the final Wings album. Not that that would have been known at the time, of course. Now, I've got a, a kind of a funny relationship with this album I tend to like most of the songs that are on here it just doesn't always together hang together brilliantly as an album and as an experience for me when I listen to it, uh, it I get the impression that it's trying to be a kind of a concept album but I've got no idea what that concept is so I often end up a little bit baffled listening to this album. But like I say, that's not to say that I don't like the songs that are on it. I think Getting Closer, as, as the first proper song on the album anyway, after the reception intro, is a great wing song, no doubt about it. And th and uh, We're Open Tonight, lovely, lovely ballad. Spin It On, Old Siam Sir, Arrow Through Me. These are all good songs. Uh, I probably prefer the first side more than I prefer the second side, I think. Uh, but it does finish on a gorgeous note with Baby's Request. I think that's a beautiful song. Um, I'm not quite sure it fits brilliantly on this album, but it is one of my favourite songs of that kind of late Wings era. So, like I say, I like most of the songs on it, but as an album, as an enjoyable album, it doesn't quite hang together for me as much as most of the other McCartney albums. So at the moment, I am putting this in 15th place, behind New and just above Give My Regards to Broad Street. Now, I expect a lot of you have probably got Back to the Egg a lot higher in your rankings. I understand that. Let me know. I would love to hear from you on that. But going back uh, to London Town now, and this was a difficult period for Wings. Obviously, they've come off the back of a massive tour, a gigantic tour. They start the sessions for this album and they start with the same lineup. Uh, Joe English and Jimmy McCulloch are still there. But then during the sessions for this, they depart the band and all of a sudden, Wings are down to a trio again. So 
a difficult a difficult making of for the album and i know a lot of people absolutely love this album i enjoy this album don't get me wrong i, I really do i think it's got some real quality songs on it Sometimes I feel it can get a little bit bogged down on the, the folkier side. Now, I, I, I love a lot of folk music, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to knock folk music, but I don't really need it on a Wings album or a Paul McCartney album. Uh, so, But with, with a good start, London Town Cafe on the left bank, two really nice songs to start with. I'm carrying absolutely beautiful song. I really love that song, the way that it builds throughout with the different sort of uh, types of strings that come in and I think is it a cello that comes in towards the end that gives it a lot of sort of bass and really fills out the sound it is a gorgeous song uh, and then it goes off in sort of directions like backwards traveler cufflink I'm not too fussed about children children is an interesting one I think it's getting into that folky area that I mentioned it's a nice pleasant song uh, but it's not going to be one of my favorites at all Girlfriend is interesting because obviously Michael Jackson then covered Girlfriend and just as he was starting to really make a name for himself as a solo artist so it was uh, and then of course what that led to a few years ago with the Paul and Michael collaborations we've, we've still got good songs all the way through this album I've had enough as a good rocker with a little look one of my favorite wing songs without a doubt especially the album version so there was an album uh, version and a, a single mix. The single mix rips out what to me, to me is one of the greatest things in the song. And it's that period where everything just kind of goes mellow for about a minute or so. And it just sort of quietens down towards the back end. And then it starts to build up a little bit before Bang Paul explodes into his, his final chorus. And they've ripped that out of the single mix. So with a little look, for me, it has to be the version on this album. Again, it all kind of goes a little bit sort of folky uh, towards the back end uh, with famous groupies, Deliver Your Children, Don't Let It Bring You Down. Uh, name and address is Paul going back to his kind of rock and roll roots a little bit, which is nice. But then at the end, we have the magnificent Morse Moose and the Grey Goose. I absolutely love that song. Uh, it's just an absolute blast, I think. And it really sort of, it really helps me to enjoy this album because I, when I finish this album, I've just come off the back of Morse Moose and the Grey Goose and I'm always going to be on a bit of a high after that. So I do enjoy this album. Where am I putting it? I'm putting it in ninth place at the moment, just below McCartney 3 uh, and just above Press to Play. Very close between this and Press to Play though. I had to think about what order I was going to put them in. We then go back to Wings at the Speed of Sound. So this is, this is them at their sort of mid-70s peak, really. Uh, wings as a band and it's also paul mccartney trying to be much more demographic democratic uh with wings and, and allowing other people to have uh songs so for example you've got joe english uh singing must do something about it which he didn't write but paul gave him that to sing we got the demo of that with paul singing in the wings at the speed of sound archive collection and we got to hear what it could have been like with paul so I think that was probably Paul trying to keep Joe happy. Joe's a good singer, let's give him a song. It doesn't necessarily mean that it ends up better than if Paul had sung it, because I expect we it may well be a more loved wing song had we got Paul McCartney singing it, but it's nice to have Joe on vocals for something. Let Him In's a classic, obviously. Um, Beware My Love, I think, is a fantastic rocker. Probably one of Wing's best rockers it starts off slow, of course, but it kind of builds up and then bang, it explodes. And you've got a great rock song there and one that was ideal for the big stadium shows of the mid-70s. Um, I like uh, Jimmy McCulloch's contribution, Why No Junk? I think that's a pretty, pretty decent sort of 70s rock song. The outstanding song on this album, without a doubt, for me, is Silly Love Songs. Uh, I just think it's it's up there with Paul McCartney's greatest songs. And of course, it's him having a go at his critics who think that that's all he does. So what does he do? He writes another one, but he pokes fun at the people who are criticising him. I think the whole production of it is amazing. I think the delivery of it is fantastic. It's got that wonderful bass line. And there's just so much going on. You've got about four different four different melodies and four different songs kind of all going on at the same time in various places but it comes together absolutely perfectly um, I've also really always really loved San Ferian at the back end of this album um, I don't know what it is about that song that I love but it's just got a vibe about it that I really enjoy 
I think the album sounds great as well, recorded at Abbey Road Studios, and it is a really good sounding album. So I enjoy uh, Wings at the Speed of Sound, but how much do I enjoy it? I am putting this in seventh place at the moment, just behind McCartney 2, but just above Memory Almost Full, and for me it's got to be a good album to get above Memory Almost Full. We're then going back to Venus and Mars. Um, I've got two versions here because I just want to point out something in a moment, something that uh, something that they did on the new version that um, that's always slightly annoyed me. But we will come to that in a moment. Venus and Mars. Now, in in terms of my history with Paul McCartney, once I got to the point where I was starting to uh, go back and see, well, what albums has he done in the past? Because because I came in, as I've said before, round about the flowers in the dirt era. When I started going back. Venus and Mars was probably just about the first Paul McCartney album that I bought. So I've got a lot of history with this album and I've got a lot of affection for it because of because of my history with it. Uh, I love the Venus and Mars rock show opening. It, I mean, it's, it's much easier to pick out here things that I don't love because we could be here all night talking about what I do love on this album. Uh, I think Spirits of Ancient Egypt is probably a, a weaker point if I'm going to pick anything out. But uh, I think it's just class all the way through. Loving Song is beautiful. You gave me the answer. is fantastic. Paul doing his musical style uh, as well as he ever did it. You know, it's obviously very similar to Honey Pie that he'd done back with uh, several years earlier on uh, the White Album. Letting Go is a great song. They're all really good songs all the way through here. Right through to Listen to What the Man Said, which is one of his absolute classics of the era. Uh, so I really, really love this album. Um, but I wanted to point out something, didn't I, that, that really annoys me. So if we look at the uh, the lyric sheet for You Gave Me The Answer, this is a... I'm not quite sure whether this is an original pressing or not, but this is an old pressing of Venus and Mars. And one of the first things that I ever noticed about this album when I first looked at this back cover was uh, when it says Terpsichore there during You Gave Me The Answer. And it's at that bit where... Uh, Paul says, uh, shall we dance? And I wondered what this meant. I remember asking my mum at the time, what does it mean? And she told me, because she was good at this kind of stuff, she told me that it was a, a, a Greek muse for, uh, I think, was it was it dance and song? So it's pointing out that there's a little dance section in the song. And then on the new version, they've got rid of it. It's not there. And I was always really disappo disappointed from when the archive collection came out and the re-release onwards that they got rid of that. Uh, just a little minor thing that shouldn't bother me, but it does. So uh, where am I placing Venus and Mars? I've obviously bigged this album up quite a bit. And I, I really ummed and ahed about this one. It's been, it's been in various places. But I have gone with this currently in position number three. Just behind Tug of War and just above Egypt Station. Um, and I th So basically I'm saying from Venus and Mars onwards... Uh, this is the third best album, uh, or my third favourite album that is done. There is only currently uh, Flaming Pie and Tug of War that I would rank higher than Venus and Mars. So that's all the albums that I'm doing in this episode of my McCartney album ranking. I, I have got five more albums left to do. They will appear in episode five. We will have then finished, or will we? because I'm planning on doing something a little bit extra. I'm not just going to finish with the last five albums. Uh, I would like to do another episode where I bring in all the kind, all the albums that I've uh, deliberately left out of this. So live albums, classical albums, and other sort of weird little side project albums that he's done over his career. I would like to bring those in and do uh, at least one more video on this particular series. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know down in the comments what you think about these rankings so far. There's another little look at it for you. And I'll be back very soon with the fifth episode where we go right back to 1970s McCartney and slot them in to finalise this ranking. Thank you very much for watching. See you again. Bye.